Hi everybody, it's Agnes. Today I have an interview with Devon. Hello Devon. Good morning, good evening, good night, or thou are. <laughs> Just In your case, good morning, I believe, yeah. right? Monday morning. Yeah, Monday morning and Sunday at your end. Let people know where you are in the world. So I'm from Newport, Rhode Island. Uh, it's eastern United States, northeast region. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right now it's a little past six. Cool. Good stuff. And today we said we would talk about your mm. success story of how you went from unmeaningful work to more meaningful work. And we said we would talk about where you were at, what you did and how you got to where you are. So I met you quite a while ago. Can you start back at the point where you, when I met you, you didn't even like your job at all. Can you start talking from that point in time? Mm. Yeah, so that was about, it was about almost about a year ago now. Wow, crazy. <clears throat> um, let's see, I want to say about April, yeah, yeah, probably late March, early April, possibly even mid April of uh, 2019. And before then, you know, I've never really had a job that <clears throat> that I necessarily like enjoyed and like got up and uh you know and just looked forward to working throughout the day which is you know most of um most everyone's goals when they're looking for a career you know you always want a job where you're you, you know you want to wake up and you're excited to go to it and then the yeah. day just passes by and you know it almost it almost feels like it didn't even work a whole eight hour day so yeah and that's pretty much the goal um uh, I mean, not saying that I haven't had jobs that I've enjoyed before. Um, probably the closest one to that, which was uh, I used to work for a company uh, the year before, in 2018. A and, what? Uh, you know, I moved Devin, a what company? That I started that. What did you say? A what company? A lumber company. Lumber company. Uh, lumber. Yep. Mm. Yeah, we uh, or more more so building supply. You know, like it wasn't just. Uh, uh, different lumber, different types of wood. It was also, you know, um, uh, like sheet rocks and and uh, uh, drawing a blank of what I'm thinking of. Uh, things that you lay on the roof. I can't remember. Yeah. Wow. I'm drawing a blank. Um, like, like roof tiles? Roof tiles? Shingles. Shingles. Oh, oh shingles. shingles. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking of shingles. I, I totally not even already tired. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I um, I did pretty well on that. I started off as like a customer service rep in the yard where I'd help out customers, and then moved my way up to uh, being a driver and a forklift operator in that. And then, um, and then the next year, when I stopped working there, then uh, I started working at St. George's uh, private school as a groundskeeper. And uh, that was a job that my granddad kind of helped me because uh, I went through a little bit of a rough time early 2019. So I was just trying to get back on my feet. And uh, I started that job yeah, about that time. And it just wasn't really my thing. You know, I mean, I got along so-so my coworkers and everything, but it just it just wasn't a job where you know you just felt like you wanted to be there. You know, I mean, it, it was nice. I mean, especially during the summer, it was nice because you know it's outdoors and you know you're taking care of uh, the grounds and everything. You know, such as weed whacking and uh, you know just taking care of the lawn, making it look nice, which is really nice when you're out and not out and about during the summer. Mm. It's a nice day, and, it's, and St. George's has a beautiful view of uh, <clears throat> one of the beaches in Rhode Island so that was always nice to like look from the hilltop and just see the nice scenery that was always a mm. I mean then again I, I've lived here for you know 23 years so almost uh you know you tend not to I mean first timers that you know have you know are in awe about it but 
then again, you get used to it. But it always still strikes me though. Mm. But, but yeah, I uh, I wasn't really too fond of the job. So after a while, um, I ended up leaving there. You know, they got into like some disagreements with employees. So, so after that, then I didn't necessarily have in a for a while. Um, I ended up working with my old woodshop teacher from high school. Uh, I went back, visited him from high school. His name is Mr. Waite. He's a, a funny guy too. And uh, it started with, he just offered me, and this is why I'm, you know, feel stupid about not remembering what it was because uh, one of the jobs that he offered was to do a roofing job where we laid down tar paper and then laid down the shingles. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, and that over the summer. And it was like 12 hours. I was sunburnt, you know, I was just, I was dying of the heat up there. Cause you know, when you're on a roof and you're just surrounded oh. by tar and everything, it just ends up getting extremely hot. Yeah. So, and I only got paid and it was 12 hours. You only gave me a hundred bucks. And I was like, uh, yeah, I don't know to live off of, uh, you know, after, I mean, a hundred bucks a day you know, on some occasions is all right, but doing that for 12 hours, that yeah, you know, it wasn't worth it either. I still needed a job, so I, I stuck with it. So after a while, and, you know, at this point, me, I was uh, 22 last year. At that point, I was like, you know, it's been a while, um, and I abandoned a dream that I always wanted to do for a while, which was uh, get into a field involving, you know, electrical works or electronics and all that stuff. You know, I love things with wires and everything. Um so at the time, around the time when I stopped working at St. George's, there was a electrical union uh, up in the side of Rhode Island in this uh, city called Cranston. <clears throat> and um, I decided to put an application there and they just needed a script in that you passed uh, high school algebra and I think uh, some other class, uh, uh, some English class, I think, because they, they had to take an acupuncture test, which was for basic algebra and reading comprehension. Uh, so they had that schedule for like uh, a month later or something like that. And, or they actually, no, they didn't schedule it yet. But they, and they'll tell you last minute too, which is kind of the annoying thing as well. You know, you end up waiting all of a sudden they say, all right, next week you got this to do. And I'm like, what, you know, I mean, thank God I only had, I was only working with my woodshop teacher, which wasn't like a steady job, but you know, God forbid if I had another thing, then the very last minute, it's like, all right, I got to take a, a day off one week later. So, um, so yeah, and about sometime around July, August, um, yeah, about July, August, uh, I was staying with a friend in Middletown. Uh, and then I had to move out of there. So I ended up crashing with my cousin for a little bit and then ended up moving back in with my grandmother, uh, which was the same place where I uh, started living back in 2019 when I stopped living in North Kingstown the previous year. <clears throat> and um, at that point, my grandmother had a neighbor. Uh, his name's Adrian, really cool guy and everything. And he works at this satellite company for, uh, that builds antennas called uh, KVH industries um and one day you know he always uh comes by you know pays the rent visits and stuff like that has like you know a little snack uh, with my grandmother and uh, he was talking to her saying hey we're uh we're gonna be hiring some people soon and he was telling telling me how um you know yeah they uh they have all these awesome benefits they're wicked laid back and, and you know you get to work with wires and everything and you know and also one of the big uh, career points that you can get to is an electrical engineer. And after I heard about that, I was like, oh, you know, that's, yeah. that's, that's my dream job right there. Uh, you know, either that or an electrician. Yeah. So around that time, that's when I took the acupuncture test for the union up in Cranston. So I took that and I passed it with flying colors and they said, all right, the next step to be interviewed for, um, you know, to get into the school and also the job that they put, because uh, when you're in the union, they send you, I think, to class for two nights a week. 
think it is. Um, and and yeah, and then and they put you in a job that is involved with the union. That's a five day a week thing. Uh, so basically, like just two days out of the week, you'd be you know pretty busy for that. Um, but in the end, after the five years, though, you get a journeyman's license, which is like a huge career opportunity for anywhere really for that matter <clears throat> so i did that and now i'm waiting waiting and waiting so i thought so i said all right i'm gonna um i'm gonna play at a kvh because you know that also has something that i would be interested in and i'll just wait for whenever the um uh whenever they're ready for the interview which you know could be i was told it could be like you know a month or two from when it was so i said all right you know work there and then you know I'll just switch over to that because that's a job and schooling so why not <clears throat> so a little bit after that then uh, my grandmother's neighbor told me uh, Adrian told me about the job opening so I said all right yeah I'm definitely interested that sounds actually really great um, so I applied for it and then I thought all right another waiting game another waiting game so I thought you know like all right well I really need a job now and I can't really afford to keep living uh you know off of basically up to like 200 a week doing hard construction you know, mm. on like 50 bucks for half a day or 100 because and i wasn't blaming my wood old wood shop teacher anyway because it's not like that was his business his business is a teacher in school this was just extra work that he doesn't decide and you can only afford to pay per the day as opposed to per hour mm. so so again I, I wasn't blaming him for that but uh it was just something that it would be more of things to do on the side on top of a full-time job. So I applied to KBH and uh, my friend, Adrian, my grandmother's neighbor, I uh, gave me this uh, business card to, for an HR member there. So he said, all right, keep calling every day. So I said, all right, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna keep calling, leave a message. I called during the morning. And then called late at night. Sometimes I'd reach him. Uh, sometimes I'd just have to leave a voicemail. So I did that for about a week. And it's strange because um, I just basically, I, I just stopped calling like for one day or something like that. And I remember thinking like, all right, both, uh, you know, both jobs have a drug test. Basically. Yeah. And at that point, like I stopped smoking a little bit for a while too. So I figured, you know, all right, you know, I'm not, if, um, you know, if worse comes to worse too, like if I did it once at that point, then, you know, I could probably get out of my system for a little bit. But at that time I thought like, all right, I'm probably even so like, it, I'm probably not going to hear from them for a little while. And that's what I thought at first. So I was hanging out with a few friends and we went up to Providence. We smoked a little bit and they brought me home from Providence and that same exact day, I got a call from the HR member saying, uh, hey, how would you like to take the drug test and then uh, start next <laughs> week? And I thought, well, don't I need an interview first? And they said, no, you're hired. Well, we just want you to take a drug test. And I thought, how did I get this without an interview? And I thought like, you know, mm. I guess my friend Adrian was, uh, you know, he's a really reputable employee there. So that's why I, uh, took his word for it because they talked to him a little bit and they said well you called every day basically you did all this that and everything you showed that you're passionate about it yeah so here you go and the funny part about this is that when i heard that i was like yes and i thought i just smoked right before then damn i gotta take a test you know next week so you know at first i was like i started panicking i was like oh my god what am i gonna do i started drinking a bunch of cranberries thinking like oh <laughs> But then I remembered, like, all right, wait a minute, back up a sec. It's not the end of the world. I didn't have that much. I'll be fine. So I calmed myself down a little bit, and just and this is actually where I was following a lot of the living in the end advice, where I kept thinking, like, all right, what would it be like? Because when I was back in high school, and it's funny, being actually, because um, my woodshop teacher I was working with, uh, sometimes he'd have field trips. And one of the field trips, actually, I think my junior year was inside KVH during the manufacturing building. We took a tour oh. of it. We saw it. So I remember what the building looked like. I thought, like, all right, what would it be like to walk through there and have, like, a blue smock on? Oh. So I would do that at night. I'd do my, you know, all their different meditations and stuff. But that was, like, the one that I 
kind of stayed on. So this, um, so yeah, I would really get like the feeling of, all right, you know, um, and the other part about this job too, is that uh, when you're on assembly, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of building an antenna over and over and over again. Uh, but it's not like something that you get sick of because despite it being kind of monotonous and uh, repetitious, it, um, it's still always fun. I mean, you know, it's, it's awesome too. You're building this, you know, thing that connects to satellites that, you know, has all this work that goes in with all these electronics and it's tested and mm. different signals, you know, and just science. Yeah. So, um, so I thought, all right. Um, so then I got the place to where I was supposed to go for the test. So I went to the test. Uh, a couple of days later, I got the same you passed. And they said, all right, you can start Monday. And I was like, yep, I'll do it. So um, now when I was staying with my grandmother at the time, uh, she lived actually almost right behind there. And I was having some problems with my car at the time as well. So I thought, you know, like, all right, I'm just going to walk to uh to the building and i'll just walk around where uh valley road was and you go up and you go behind like this little center area and that's where the building was <clears throat> so i'm walking and i kept thinking like all right I'm, you know I, and i this is where actually the uh um affirmations were coming in because i was saying all right i'm confident i can do this i can do this you know yeah. uh because again i've never learned about a lot of this i've never actually gone into like a first day of a job you know with my hell my head held up and being like all right i'm ready to hit the ground running so i start my first day there um and the boss looks at me as you know oh you're an hour late i was like what what do you mean i'm an hour late because uh one of our offices that hired was in chicago that's an hour behind where we are and ah. they set my starting time for 7:30 on their time. Yeah. So I I panicked a little bit thinking like there's no late. So when he said no no or then I explained to him I said well they told me to come in at 8:30 and I, and they were like oh that's why. Ah. Uh. Um so yeah so then I started and he goes all right and I thought well yeah I'm only going to be working a 7 hour day today so right off the bat I asked like all right well can I make up for it for like an hour of overtime? you know, one of these days I said, sure, you know, and I said, all right, well, uh, um, you know, I'll do it by, uh, you know, just staying after just learning the procedure to, um, uh, how to build. And I was put on the first station for their actually most popular satellite, which was, uh, just called the V7 ES. And I stayed after I kept prepping like the sub parts for it, uh, for the procedure. And it just got really fun for me. So after a while, then I was just showing an issue and I was thinking like, all right, I want to work really hard and show that like this, you know, this is definitely my job that I, you know, God, I love this job. Yeah. Um, and after a while, then they were saying like, you know, all right, this, you know, they're a little bit on guard about like, you know, cause a lot of people who start, they'll have the initial boost of um, like this work ethic, which is, you know, yeah. almost kind of like, uh, yeah, you know what I mean? Um, yeah you know where it's just almost like the honeymoon stage of a yes. job, which granted i actually have had before but in this case i was determined like all right i'm gonna get this to last a lot longer this time so after like three weeks about a month i still had the same ethic where i was like all right i'm gonna work my butt off and the other thing too that i liked about this job was uh it's um it's so stimulating because there's never like, you know, other different jobs that I've had some like kind of downtime. Then it's just, you tend to get bored after a while, but there's always something to do, especially if you're trained on multiple departments, whether you're in packing or testing or assembly or whatever. Mm -hmm. And when you're multi-trained, you can, you know, say if you like back up one part of like assembly where you build a few units so the next guy can stay busy for a while, then you can hop over to another thing. So I got trained into packing for a while at the end of the quarter. Uh, so, and I actually met one of my best friends that I have over there. Uh, his name's Alex. And uh, we kind of bonded over, uh, you know, we're huge fans of heavy metal and stuff. So uh, uh, he, saw, he saw me wearing, uh, I'm not sure what I wear at the time. 
think it was like a misfit shirt or something and he was like hey do you know you listen to metal and stuff and we started talking about different bands i was like yeah black sabbath and he told me uh like this band behemoth i was like oh that's cool so we got bonding over that um so fast forward you know a few months later then they're still shocked they're like wow this guy's still <laughs> going nuts you know what's what's the deal with this so um i told my boss i said you know look this is you know i've actually because now I've been working there for almost a half a year now. Uh, yeah, about five months. And I told him, I was like, look, this is, you know, this job actually has the, the like main destination where I want to go. Uh, you know, I want to be an electrical engineer, but even right now, like this is a blast to have. I can tell that this is the job I've been waiting for. Um, and also on the story back with the union. Now at that point, I completely have forgotten about it. So I always, you know, I check my emails every now and then, and then I finally get a, uh, a email from the union saying, all right, we're ready for your interview. And I thought that was five, you know, that was four months ago. And yeah. now I found a job, which is, you know, you know, about kind of the same thing, except actually in a way it's, it's almost a, a lot easier, more comfortable, you know, I'm, I'm working close to having that climb through an attic to you know full of asbestos and formaldehyde yeah and stuff i mean you know again electricians don't make good money you know building lights this is an extremely awesome company too and again super laid back and everyone's wicked nice and stuff and you know and, and, and my boss will always you know he'll always be lenient with me he'll always be understanding and like you you'll rarely ever, rarely ever will get that so i was like this, you know this is how can you get better than that it's awesome and then so ever since then, it's like my mind has been set with this. And at that point, that's when I decided to tell the union, it's like, I'm sorry, I'm not going to make it. I got yeah. you know, I got a job to do because yeah. I lost. I said, you know, I'm in a little bit of a rut. Like, what am I going to do? You know, do I do I go with the union where I can eventually become an electrician, you know, make a journeyman's license, and, you know, make X amount of money, which is still a lot. Or do I go with this? And even though it will take the longer route to get to an electrical engineer, it'll still be a lot of money as well. And, plus, you know, and again, still the same because engineer, electrical engineer or electrician is still the same. I mean, it, well, not the same, but it's like the same thing that I wanted. Either one of those, I, I it was what I wanted to do as a career. Yeah. Uh, and I thought, all right, you know what? The electrical engineer, it may take longer, but if there's anything that I've learned is that when things, not necessarily the long, well, actually, no, I, it, um, that's the right phrase. The longer things will take for me, honestly, when it finally gets to you, the more fulfilling it is. So that whole journey of like finally working hard and getting toward it will be like the most rewarding sensation ever. You know, like, I oh. mean, I, um, for example, like right now I'm basically climbing up the ropes and I moved up to another position. I've been learning every single station of the V7 assembly. And uh, when you learn all four stations, and then when you got new people on, you become the line leader, which is like almost a sub team leader position and stuff. And yeah. even then just get, you know, eventually making it, that will be fulfilling and stuff. Cause it just, it was all the energy and the hard work that you put toward it. And when you're passionate about it mm. and just the fact that you can look back and just see the great work that you did in order to get there, you know, it just becomes all fulfilling. Obviously the biggest thing is it takes patience. Mm. So that's where got to, or where I got. That's brilliant. Way of phrasing it, but you know what I mean. Yeah. So you're still really passionate and you love it. I think that's the main ingredient in. Yeah. yeah. What's so interesting is you go to your grandmother's, the guy next door just happens to come over to have a cup of tea with your grandma. And then you find out about it, like you didn't go looking online, you didn't go looking in the newspaper, you didn't go looking on some job site. It's like it came in through the back door from you just being at your grandmother's place and this guy coming over. I mean, talk about an amazing bridge of events without you, because your intention to oh, do, it's amazing. Yeah, it was... 
it was completely unexpected and, and literally was me coming through the back door because the way how our yeah. house was set up was the door where you know he goes through there and then I park in the back and then there's the back door and I just came back you know and, and like I was a little bit bummed out because you know or, and frustrated because my car wasn't really working well at the time so I came back and I was like I I gotta bring it over to the uh, garage that's up the street and I just see him sitting there I was like hey what's going on Adrian he goes hey what's up Dev and um and then uh, he was just saying, hey, I was just talking with your grandmother about this. And, and he said, yeah, come, come over next door. <laughs> Stuff and it just it almost seemed too good to be true. I was like, a, a job that pays well and, and all this stuff. And, and, and yeah, and ever since then, I was able to finally get my own place again. I had roommates now. I lived down in Newport, in my own apartment. Yeah. I got my own room. Um, you know, uh, as soon as I get my tax return returns back, I'm going to get a new car. I have this comfortable <laughs> mattress and it's like the first time I've ever had a really comfortable mattress too, which is just yeah. amazing. It's, it's these new mattresses called purple. Yeah. And it's like this, not foam, but it just, when it, it like conforms to your spine when you're laying on your back and it's just, oh, it's just the most comfortable uh... feeling ever. Now, I remember when I first got it. Um, oh yeah. It's incredible. And again, like another thing too, uh, and I just started working at kvh and i asked my boss hey uh you know can i take like you know a couple hours off so that when they're delivering the mattresses you know that i can be there and help them out he goes oh yeah it's perfectly fine just like that and i was only working there for like three weeks wow. i didn't even have any vacation time nothing he was like yeah go ahead we'll wow like, okay wow yeah that's lovely oh my god a good yeah, bit so a, a, a good bed and people that appreciate mm. you, I mean, that is just such a, an amazing two things to be really grateful for. Because, boy, when you don't have a good bed, it's like it, 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 it leaks into your whole day. It leaks into your whole day. If you have a good bed, a good sleep, mm. it, oh, my God, it makes yeah. every day so much better. It really does. That's brilliant. That's a good part of self-care is getting a good bed. Oh, exactly. <laughs> Oh, yeah. that's brilliant. Yeah, anyone who's watching, I definitely recommend it. <laughs> mm. Good stuff. Oh, it's so good watching your journey with this. But I think it's like you said, this is something that I wanted from a very young age. I always wanted to, I like how you said, I just like working with wires, you know, like it's that simple. I just like working with wires. I like wires. I like putting things together. I mean, you, you've got that thing in your head that that's fun for you. And when it's fun, it's like you don't have oh, to yeah. try. You don't have to try and motivate. The inspiration, the fun, just comes through. You're not going. Oh, I have to get up mm. and get motivated. No. It's like I gotta plug my phone in. It's dying. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, like when you really love what you do, there is no need for trying to get motivated. The inspiration just comes through. It's like a push from behind. It's easy. That's so oh, great. Yeah, it, just, it just comes to you. Yeah. Yeah. And that you've met, you know, like-minded people. And is the Adrian guy working there? Do you see him? Oh, yeah, every day, every single day. Lovely. He must have been happy that he recommended you with I the amount of joy you have for this job. He, always... oh, yeah. <coughs> oh, yeah, he even... <coughs> He even told me actually that um, the director of manufacturing, who's the guy that basically was like the overseer, um, he told me that he came up to him one day, and this was just a, a huge boost in my confidence. Where he goes, hey, Adrian, thank you, and he goes for you know for what for working on. It? He goes, no, for Devin. And he's like, really? And you know, because because <laughs> that's the other thing too is that I've also been telling people how like I want to become an electrical engineer, and everyone's rooting for me too. And, and also, <laughs> this is actually something that will make history is that there's never been anyone from manufacturing who has made it to electrical engineer. There's never been someone who's went from a blue smock to a white smock. The white smock are like the engineers uh, and the really higher ups. And stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's where, you know, like, a, you know, a huge motivation. Um, who, who uh, I can't remember. It was one motivational speaker that I was listening. I think it was Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. She was uh, when he was talking about um, when he was trying to become, uh, you know, Mr. Olympia, how, you know, our bodybuilding, you know, all his um, family and friends in Austria were saying, like, 
you can't do that. It's an American sport. And he said, oh, it's, if it, you know, when people say it's never been done before, then what you hear is, you know, then it will happen and it can be done. You know, when someone says you can't do that, well, I can do that. You know what I mean? It's always, it's the yeah. reverse of, because who is, you know, who is to say that something can't be done, even yep. if something has never been done before? Yep. I mean, Neville said it best too, you know. Uh, yeah. People, people believe we couldn't go into space. Now we have, you know, rocket ships, NASA. People say we couldn't live underwater. Now we have submarines. People still yeah. won't believe it, but yeah. it's happened. Yeah, it's so true. And there needs, and to, there needs to be the first person. There always needs to be the first person to do to pave the way for other people. So why not? Exactly. Why not? Yeah. I thought, why not? You know, what, why couldn't I do this? It, this has been my big dream and yeah, you know, let's, let's, let's see where it goes. Let's do it. That's so great. That'll be a wonderful, you know, career too. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not far from home. Oh no. It's uh, honestly like 10 minutes down the road. And even then, I don't even care if it, you know, if I still live in North Kingston, I would drive over the bridge for every day. You know, I, yeah. And I mean, it does come in handy that it's uh, pretty close to, I end up always showing about like 15 minutes early, just get myself <laughs> ready, which my, uh, my friend Adrian, who, you know, he'll walk through the door and he just sees me at work. He goes, Matt. you know, he said after a while, it's like, you know, <laughs> you know he goes, Dev, it's almost like not even shocking that, you know, you're working hard and early, you know, it's just kind of become a norm to see you work and, <laughs> Just, you know, assembling the framing, you know, settling. It's like, yep, yep, there's Dev again, just going at it. And it's like, <laughs> thanks, you know. I know, isn't it great when you just you love something? So you just love it. You're happy to get there early. It's just brilliant. It's brilliant. Oh, yeah. 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 What, what better job that, you know, is there than just being able to go to work, throw on your headphones listen to music listen you know to listen to your channel listen to neville all that stuff and just and basically just play with like you know yeah. an adult version of like a, an intricate lego <laughs> that, that's pretty much all it is it just feels like i'm playing with legos that involve screws and you know and and drivers and everything uh, i didn't I realize to look back and it's like i built that yeah at least you can see a result i didn't realize you could listen to um stuff while you're doing it that's brilliant oh yeah another perk i mean let me let me think of all the perks uh that just that just make this job incredible <laughs> um well, every day at nine o'clock we got three breaks every day at nine there's a, a doughboy's truck this uh this guy named really who comes in he's got like cook you know he shows up with a truck opens it up he's got cooked food and everything on like a grill serves that to us <laughs> uh every first wednesday of the month there's the luncheon which is a, a restaurant to us um, every year uh, during Christmas. The the owner of the company, really nice guy, his name's Martin. Uh, he gives everyone a Christmas bonus, which is their paycheck. So whatever you get for your paycheck, you get it again, essentially from him, from himself. Lovely. He's a super generous guy, wicked nice. And um, actually, in and in our friends group, his his nephew actually works with us too. Who, who's you know who's super. Um, what's the word I'm looking? For? or you know who's super humble too you know that uh his nephew he's the nephew of the owner um yeah who owns the company and it doesn't mention that at all and you know just but if you read into it you'd notice because uh kvh stands for kids fan uh heinigan i believe that's how you yeah. pronounce his name and that's uh will uh, uh my friend's last name willem willem kids fan heinigan and doesn't really say he just works in the uh, I2CM department, which is like these little radio boxes that go with the satellites. And, and it's cool too, because it's not just my department that I'm, uh, you know, I have a group of friends with. Like, as a matter of fact, Adrian works on a completely different satellite, which I hope to learn how to build too. Cause, because that's the, even the other thing too, is that even besides moving, you know, oh, uh, my way up to an electrical engineer, is that there's so many different departments in manufacturing of all these different satellites. And it's just, it's so an overload of stimuli of being like, I, I can learn everything, what to go to next, you know? Yeah. Obviously I got to start on my line, which, uh, you know, which I have like the coolest boss ever. And, and he sees my enthusiasm. So he said, well, we'll get you there eventually. Just 
slow down, calm down, <laughs> and learn one thing at a time. And I was like, well, I want to learn everything. Though. I want to learn that thing. How do you do that? You know, and it's just, it's so fun too. God, it's just so great. And how many days a week? Are you five days a week? I wish it was more, but yeah. I yeah, wish it was um, more. <laughs> actually, well, no. Yeah, I do take that back, actually. Sometimes uh, we are given overtime, especially because, you know, we have like a quota to meet for uh, satellites because, I mean, we, we ship them all over the place, you know, to, uh, or not satellites, antennas. So, you know, we ship them to Singapore, to, to Denmark, all over the world. Um, and actually, I think we have a little bit of overtime right now. Uh, luckily, tomorrow, um, you know, actually Friday, as a matter of fact, I'll uh, tell that story in a second. I had an amazing day, but uh, tomorrow we're actually, we have a new uh, guy who's uh, um, in me, Willem, and Alex's friends group, and we play uh, D and D every Monday. So after working on his first day, we're gonna uh, get to go play the game. Um, and we finally got him hired to be in packing so that my friend Alex can train him and then move him up to assembly because I could see that uh, my friend Alex, you know, he's been working in uh, the packing department uh, just basically the whole time he's been there for about a year. And I can tell that his enthusiasm was kind of dying. And I thought like, all right, well, he's a, you know, he's a hard worker, but I can just see that packing because it involves a lot of heavy lifting because you got to lift up the actual antennas themselves put them in the box and pack them right so that they're secure so when you ship them out yeah and I thought to myself like hey you know that's that's got to be it's got to do like kind of a take a toll on your body too especially after doing it for a while so I thought I feel like I'd be more enthusiastic with being in an um, assembly so for and at first you know when uh when I first started I thought like hey I'm, I bet I can get you to assembly so I said to him and he said yeah good luck with that man you know I kind of felt a little negative about it so I thought, all right, watch me. So um, every, you know, again, every now and then what I like to do is I like to run from the assembly line, get enough units built for the next guy, and then run over to packing. So I'm also trained on that. And yeah. a, uh, we got packing pretty much cleared out. No antennas to be packed, nothing, not even dummy drums, which are like basically just um, j just the antennas or it's the domes that the antennas are put on, unlike yeah. the yachts, except that there's nothing in it. It's just a match so that the ships look like they have multiple ones. And we had nothing to do, nothing on the backlog. So I asked my boss, I said, hey, uh, can I get Alex over on the line and train him on the station I'm on? He looks over at the packing and he goes, yeah, why not? Go for it. So I trained him on the subs. I said, all right, we're just going to start simple, uh, grease some bearings, uh, build me this foundation, you know, connect it to the buck tray, and there you go. So we did that. And... Um, and another little blessing in disguise too, actually, a little side note. Um, I ended up breaking my finger uh, about a month ago, and I couldn't really uh, assemble too much because it involves like you know very, being very precise with uh, trying to put in screws and everything. So I said to my boss, like, hey, I could probably do packing a lot better because it doesn't involve like you know doing that, and I, and I don't have to use my whole, you know, I don't have to use all my fingers. I can just grab the satellite in a certain way, and yeah, you know, it was just a lot easier for me. So I said why don't I switch with Alex and he moves on assembly so he can get a little used to that. So we did that and the line was still moving pretty steady. And then finally uh, my boss was seeing that art, right? He's doing a lot better over there. So we thought, all right, if we can get someone else in the packing, train him and comf uh, confident enough where he, the new guy can be on uh, by himself, I'll move you to the line and we'll move uh, one of the guys that we have on our line right now for the V7 to uh, this different antenna called the V3 because he's also trained on that too and we also have to uh, get that done because we have a quota for that too we're pretty short staffed so basically um, so after that finally got our friend uh, his name he's starting tomorrow we're going to train him um, yeah. and once he gets confident enough to be by himself then finally we're going to have my friend <laughs> Alex on the line on the second station which is put in the frame and I get moved to the programming of the circuit board. Um, so, he, so he'd be much and, happier? Oh, and he's much happier now. I can see, you know, the life in his eyes starting to return, thinking like, oh, wow, you know, I'm actually excited for this job again. Nice. And I looked at him, I was like, I told you. <laughs> and then I thought to myself, I was like, I feel like that was a way of manifesting actually for someone else. Yep. 
was like, wow, I actually feel pretty good about that. Yeah. And all in all, yeah, everyone's happy now. Uh, yeah. Tomorrow is going to be a great day. And then and Friday, too, Friday was just, I can tell that his, you know, he can see that he's definitely going to be moving up to that uh, station as well. Uh, Friday, we were slammed with all these different kinds because um, for packing, it's not just the HDS units, such as the ones that I build, but it's also on the other side, which is the maritime units that uh, we have to pack to, to send out and to be shipped out. So he had, you know, in the packing department, it's not a one person department, which kind of sucks. But it, uh, I guess the way how it's set up, there only is one now. So that's why I try to run back there and give him a hand. Yeah. But throwing my headphones, we ended up getting so much out just the two of us and to the point you know because my boss he was wicked stressed out that day and he, you know he had an argument with his wife his son mm. had uh like an earache or something so he was thinking like this this day is just a disaster we ended up making it from that and helping him set up because we had to right next to it so that like we're all in the same area the assembling testing and packing yeah and we ended up getting all that done before the end of the day and my boss went from just being you know like wicked tired looking to just wow came a good day he congratulated the both of us wow and uh and that just you know that um <laughs> that just helped out not just me but also my buddy too so that he can uh get a leg up as well yeah it's so good when you see someone's light starting to go go out and you you in your mm. good vibe you can use your good vibe to uplift them because you feel good about what you're doing you can kind of spread it out that's wonderful. Wonderful. Oh yeah. yeah. Br the best feeling ever too when uh when I'm at that job is when we all work as a team and when we all rally together. Well, sounds like you've got a giving a giving the person that owns the business understands giving and taking care of people and appreciation. And when you're in that kind of organization makes a huge difference. Mm. Yeah. That's great, Devin. I'm really happy for you. That's a major turnaround going from work you don't like to meaningful work. Major. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well done to you. Good manifesting. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. No, it's great. It's only going to even better. Yeah, exactly. And it's that thing of you know, when you do this work on yourself, you work on all parts of your life. You work on your relationships, you work on, and you're working on your relationships at work. You're, you're uplifting people. You're making things better for the boss, for the, your colleague, the guy that gave you the job, you know, he's got, he obviously made a really good, smart decision to tell you about the job it's like this whole chain of reaction of really good stuff it's brilliant yeah and i, I just felt the need to just give back too because yeah um, you know because when he helped me get the job i thought like all right what's the best way i can make it up for him because he just did you know just yeah. you know, this job just made me feel incredibly happy i just felt all right what can i do to give back yeah so i'd help him out you know with something he needed uh, yeah because you know every now and then because when the truck comes uh we're allowed to basically keep a tab and you know and he's been having a little bit of uh, money problems too so i thought all right you know why don't i spot him on his tab so we can get some food and he yeah. was super appreciative of that too yeah you know, just working as a team because you know when i'm kind of short they help me out when i'm there yeah short, I help them out we yeah. all help each other out and stuff yeah and that's another great thing about the job is just feeling like a team yep yeah, that's wonderful. But you know what? I think you've kind of worked out one of the most important lessons in in work, which is I'm not here to see what I can get from it. I'm I'm here to see what I can give to it. That mm. is what you're doing because I see a lot of people that are dissatisfied with jobs, they're always looking at what they can get from their job, get more money, get more time off, get more this, get more that. And it's no different to relationships. If you can go to a job and see what you can give to it, it's very different. Mm. 
the, the, it's like the job just rewards you over and over and over again when you come into the workplace with that, what can I give today? How can I serve today? How can I help my colleagues today? How can I help my boss today? You know, when you go in like that, it's like everything you touch turns to gold, as they say. It's brilliant. Yeah. And, you know, and you'll find yourself just, you know, because not only will that just give you just such a great feeling for just, you know, being gener uh, generous. Yeah. Just, you know, giving a helping hand and just, you know, that and just seeing the, the satisfaction from people on that, you'll just end up just getting it all back in return. You, know, you do. And, and you won't even ask for it, too. It just yeah. becomes. Yeah. A flow. It, it's, just, it's just a norm for that yeah. to happen. Yeah. yeah. And there's such a joy in the giving, isn't there? Like you really realize, yeah, receiving's great, too, but there's an intense joy in real giving. Hmm. Yeah, you know, the, one of the best feelings ever is just to see, you know, someone just uplifted and stuff. Yeah, you know, just being from here and down to all the way up yep. here. Yeah, you know, that's uh, just great because it is. Then it's just it's starting to heal all the you know broken pieces. It is, it is, and I, and I have to say I feel that in my job or in my business every mm -hmm. day it's when you see someone walk away with that light in their eyes again, you go ah they're back on track. They felt it. They're doing it. I wanted to ask you something. What happened with the drug test? Cause you were freaking out about it and then you went. So you obviously passed, but, but did they give you the results or how did, were you, what happened with that? They said I passed and that's the strange thing. <laughs> Cause it was just like a week before then. And, you know, yeah. and usually the, the, you know, the stuff I take stays in your system for like a month. And I was thinking like, uh, how, how wow. is that possible? I mean, that's the, that's the part that I'll never be able to figure <laughs> out. You know, I mean, it, maybe fast metabolism, maybe it just wasn't enough. Who knows? Yeah, but still, who knows? Like that, that was the, that's, that's the Ripley's believe it or not part of the uh, yeah. uh, story. Yeah. <laughs> And you were so yeah, meant to be. Twilight Zone. Yeah, it's like you were. Every, everything you did was. It, it looked after you, just all the whole along the way. It's like a chain mm. of events, a bridge of events from Adrian sitting there with your grandmother, and you you've got you're anno annoyed about your car. <laughs> it just all yeah. took a right turn in I the just positive got a direction. One eighty. Yeah, brilliant. Mm. Well, thank you for coming to share this. It, it's so good to hear people that have meaningful work that they love to get up for, because I know a lot of people don't. So hopefully this will inspire people to keep whatever it is they desire alive. And um, hopefully you'll be around to answer some questions in the thread so you can pay it forward, help people out, because it is a big shift in your mind going from what can I get to what, how can I give? It's a big shift. So. And look at, you know, I mean, I'm a, I remember you said, I, I don't have a place to live. I'm still living with my grandmother. You know, like everything kind of just all shifted. It's like you've created more and more freedom for yourself. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Finally... Again. <laughs> yeah, it's good. All right, Devin, thank you. Thank you. And uh, do you want to say goodbye to everybody? And then we'll say goodbye in private after we stop recording absolutely yeah yep everyone just uh just keep that hope up and just remember when once you find whatever you're passionate about no matter what anyone says just follow it because yeah. you'll you'll know the feeling once you get to, you'll know that, that feeling once you find that job it'll it, it almost like it almost whisper in your ear and being like ah, it's me <laughs> it's like oh, all right got it and just once so you're just confident about it when there's just no barriers like it, nothing can stop you that's all i'm gonna say yeah. nothing will be able to oh. you know what i love about your story Devin? it's just that one little sentence i just love playing with wires you know it's just like this childhood thing mm. of putting things together and making things work and it's just this thing that you have in childhood that you enjoy and and it's carried into adulthood you're still playing and enjoying putting things together and making things work it's such a simple thing, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Simple. 
Actually, you know, it's one thing I forgot to mention too that almost is almost like a tie into like some things from my child as well. Because one thing I've always been obsessed with um, ever since I was a child too was space and stuff. I mean, I'm like, for example, I'm a huge Star Wars nerd. Um, yeah. I always just felt fascinated with space. Like one of the first movies I ever saw was uh, this movie called The Right Stuff, uh, yeah. which, which was about the Magnificent Seven, like uh, um, like Gordo Cooper. Uh, uh, wow, drawing a blank again. Uh, Alan Shepard. That's like all the uh, original astronauts from the American Space Program, the Mercury Program that went into space. Yeah. And I remember just thinking, like, wow, how cool would that be to like be involved in it? Well, I'll build antennas that connect the satellites from space. <laughs> so not only is it, you know, I'm working with wires too, which was the electrical part. It's also having something to do with space because we yeah. also actually do help. You know, we we do build antennas for not just you know people with yachts, but also the military and NASA as well. So it's like, yeah, okay, everything just you know that that's, <laughs> everything's connected. You know, I I finally got it. I can I can relax now. <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant. It all came full circle. It all came full circle. Well, thank you for giving your time and sharing your success story because I think, you know, a lot of people struggle with yeah, meaningful absolutely. work. So I appreciate it. And everybody, I will see you in the next interview, in the next YouTube. I hope you enjoyed Devin's story and I hope it inspires you to move into your own meaningful work. I'll see you in the next YouTube.